Greetings everyone, my name is TJ, and together with Storm we're going to be doing a video on the Season 6 tier changes. If you haven't already, please join our Discord right here. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, where you can be following everything that you need to know about Season 6 tier videos. Thanks for the intro, TJ, and this is Battlestorm. We're going to be talking about the changes that, to our tier list for the upcoming Season 6. Um, you know, as TJ mentioned, we're going to be starting our new season. If you're interested in participating, you'll be able to find in the description of the video uh, a link to the complete updated tier list, not just the changes, but the complete list, as well as a place where you can sign up for the league. So here we just wanted to give a quick rundown of, of the tiers before we say what the changes are. You'll see here a list of all of the tiers, banned, S+, plus, S-, minus, A, B, C, D, E, and F. Uh, Pokemon that are banned are, of course, not allowed. S+, plus and S-, minus are reserved for extremely powerful Pokemon. These are things like Palkia or Dialga or Fluttermane that most leagues don't allow. Uh, we do allow them, but we allow you to only have one of them. That's kind of how we, we balance it. Not everybody, um, you know, not every league has these things, but ours, ours does. It's just sort of how we choose to set the power level of our league. We have done some tier changes by inviting the moderator team as well as the league champions from Season 5 to vote on certain Pokemon to move either up or down one tier. And that does include banning and unbanning certain Pokemon. Things might be moving up because they were just too powerful for a certain tier, and things might be moving down because they were underperforming or maybe they weren't being uh, drafted very much or at all. So I guess let's get to it and we'll start with the Pokemon that were banned and have been moved down to S+. So going from ban to S+, plus, we have the legendary Regenerator Ho-Oh and uh, Technician Legendary Pokemon Marshadow. So obviously these are both really strong. Uh, Ho-Oh we allowed in a side season, I think it was season 4.5, and the general consensus was that it was a little bit too strong to allow. Uh, I was someone who thought that at the time, and I still think it's really strong, but we've moved to um, allow it this season, and we'll see you know, just how strong it is. Some people might use it to help them win the league, and, and that's, that's fine. Uh, but we like to move things in and out just to keep things fresh, uh, to change it up. So we decided to allow it, and of course Marshadow as well, just to shake up the league. Uh, have some new high tier threats and, and see what happens. Mark Shadow is something that we had allowed back in season one. That was a pretty long time ago, back in generation eight. And a lot has changed since then. We actually didn't have an S minus tier at that time or an S plus, it was just S. So with Mark Shadow being an S plus, which is a tier that, that costs more, uh, I think it'll be more fair for sure. It's still going to be super strong, but I'm interested in seeing how uh, strong it will be in S plus and with the general power creep from generation eight and nine, eight to nine. So these two are for sure going to be really powerful, probably the strongest Pokemon available, but I think it's going to be interesting and fun. Yeah, and this is one that I don't think is going to surprise too many people. A lot of people just sort of won based off of having this. They, they won a lot of games just by sending this thing out and, and clicking Calm Mind and, and setting up, and and may, maybe their opponent wasn't able to do much about it. Uh, now, we did see in Premier League um, some players came up with good strategies for beating it, and I'm sure that happened in the other leagues too, and, and maybe I didn't see them. Uh, but it definitely was very beatable. But overall, it was just decided that this thing was too strong and needed to go. Uh, what were your thoughts on it, TJ? I definitely agreed that it was just a, a very strong defensive mon that required way too many resources. Uh, otherwise, it, it could have maybe stayed, but too much commitment. For sure. 
Oh, we have S plus to S minus, which has had no changes at all. Yeah, so we'll see here that um, there are a lot of tiers that nothing moved to, or you know there was nothing to move from S plus to S minus. So we've got these empty filler things here just to remind us about that. S minus to S plus, no changes as well, so nothing moved up. And going from S minus down to A, we have Annihilate. Yeah, and this is an interesting one because Annihilate was in A tier at the start of Generation 9. And the general consensus was that it was probably the best thing in A tier. People were drafting it number one overall, and it moved up. But, you know, I think it's time that we reconsidered it. It was struggling in S minus. A lot of people weren't using it, and it was obvious that it was one of the weakest Pokemon that we had in S minus. So I think this was a good change. Next, we have going from A down to S minus, one of the legendaries of uh, treasures, uh, Chen Pao. Yeah, and this is a, a move up. So uh, basically, it was identified that this was the strongest Pokemon in A. That's something I would agree with. And it's been moved up into S minus. So you won't see any more of those teams with Dragapult plus Qian Pao. Um, you know, combos like that, which just seem crazy. Iron Valiant plus Qian Pao. Great Tusk plus Qian Pao. These were all combos that were. Um, tearing up their leagues. Um, well, I guess you can still have them, but Qian Pao will, will use up your S tier, so you won't be able to have those two plus another S tier. So I think it's a good change. Uh, TJ, what do you think about these these swaps between A and S minus here? I think that uh, with its ability and strong offensive potential, along with priority, it definitely needed to move up to join uh, Chiyu, another powerful Pokemon. Go through defenses with the right conditions and win when teams against teams. Yeah, I agree. Now we have A going down to B. We have a uh, Victini, a uh, Mega Sableye, Arathorn, Pelipper. Yeah, so this is a pretty big buff for rain teams. You've got Pelipper and you've got Ferrothorn, which finds its way onto a lot of rain teams, moving down to B tier, making rain a lot more accessible. Uh, before you had to either pick Politoed or use your A tier on Pelipper. So now you're able to use your B tier on Pelipper, opens up your A tier for uh, maybe a Tornado Sterian or, or something else, I don't know. But it'll be interesting. I think we'll see more people playing rain. We've also got Victini moving down. I think it used to be B tier and it moved up and, and now it's moving back down because it wasn't seeing a whole lot of um, action there. Personally, I think it's fine in either A or B. It's pretty strong, but uh, it wasn't getting picked very much. So it makes sense that it's moving down. Mega Sableye is one that I think we've considered moving down for a little bit. So maybe you could say this is overdue. Moving down to B, that's probably going to help stall teams, which have historically struggled pretty hard in this league. So it might be interesting to see if anybody can pull that off with not only Mega Sableye, but also Ferrothorn going down to B. I think a lot of these mons were really um, had tad overpriced for their value, especially now that with, with all these Terra changes, um, some of these mons can be a lot more easily dealt with in, in, in prior. Yeah, and that's a good point. I mean, A tier, B tier, and of course S, none of these are allowed to, to terrestrialize. So, um, you know, we're, we're seeing basically some things move around just to accommodate for the rules and the general power level and, and power creep. But some of these things might have been a little bit overdue to move down. And nothing moved up from B to A. And we had several things that moved down uh, from B down to C. 
uh, we had uh, two like, Ultra Beasts. Uh, we had Zerka Tree and a Pokemon nicknamed Jenga. Then we have uh, Cleavor, one of the newer ones. We also had Mousehold, uh, Population Bomb, the Sharp. Got an evolution in Gen 9, Togekiss. And this is a really interesting place to be looking if you're looking for some inspiration for your team. Because these were all Pokemon that were previously not allowed to terrestrialize, and uh, now they are. So you've got six new things here to, to sort of lab out new Terra types and, and figure out if, if they um, belong on your team for terrestrialization. Now, none of these were really getting a ton of use. Uh, Cleavor is something that when it was released, we thought was going to you know, be extremely um, uh, useful with its stealth rock setting attack, Stone Axe, but we, we just haven't really seen it used a whole lot. Uh, Mousehold, Mousehold, kind of a similar thing. It has Tidy Up, which clears hazards and sets up all in one, but I guess it was just a little bit overpriced at B. So we'll see those things move down to C. Bisharp, you know, we thought maybe with King Gambit coming on, giving it the Eviolite boost, it would um, hold up in B, but really hasn't done too much. Uh, I know the moderator team has gotten a little bit of flack for keeping it at B, so maybe now that it's moved down to C, we'll see it used a little bit more. Stakataka is a Pokemon that haunts my nightmares personally because it... Uh, has defeated me with Trick Room, so I do not look forward to more people drafting that. Maybe I'll have to draft it myself so that no one can use it against me. Uh, Zerka Tree, you know, another very cool option for terrestrialization. Part of its problem is that it doesn't get amazing coverage. I know it learns Energy Ball, but you can now buff that by going Terra Grass. You can go Terra Ice. Um, you can get pretty creative with different Terra options. And of course, Togekiss. Uh, I don't know exactly what the best Terra type for that will be, but there's a lot of cool options. I mean, you can go ground and flip your type chart. You can go something like fighting and get a boost to your coverage moves. So I think we could see a lot of interesting things here. Yeah, I agree. I think that with, with, especially with regards to Terra being granted to a lot of these months, they can affect their, their weaknesses, uh, help um, offensive potential. I think. Um, like you said, Cleaver is one of those mons that we thought were going to be originally strong, even with its attack stat, but it just did not do what it needed to be belong along with everything else. And we'll see how many people actually want to adopt the mouse family now that it's actually a C tier. I am excited for that, yeah. I want to see some mouse hold sweeps. And nothing moved from C to B tier. And uh, this is something I wanted to point out that I found interesting. Uh, we didn't have a lot of things moving up. Uh, nothing moved from C to B, nothing moved from B to A. So we're seeing basically the power level of teams is going to increase here. You're going to be able to draft things in lower tiers than they were last season. And uh, we will see how that plays out. Now here are a bunch of changes uh, going from C down to D. We have a uh, Mega Houndoom. We have Espeon. Here, Tim. We have Crobat. Crobat has had a little bit of controversy with tier changes. Uh, Duraludon was uh, given another form last season. Then we have Scovillain. And we have uh, the par well, the first paradox form that they've been, I guess, moved to really uh, rip on it. Yeah, and there's a lot here to talk about. So, right in the middle, we've got everybody's favorite uh, tier placement disaster, Crobat, which, as we know, uh, everybody has a different opinion on. And today, it's going to be moving down from C tier to D tier. So, we'll see how it holds up. We'll see. If next season people want to move it back to C tier or B tier or who knows. Um, but I'm excited to see it move and I hope it encourages more people to draft Crobat because I like Crobat and I might have to pick it myself. 
Uh, Duraludon is pretty similar to Bisharp. We thought that having the ability to hold the Eviolite would help it more than it did, but just didn't see it being used a whole lot. Uh, another fan favorite, Tim, also known as Mantine, but more commonly known as Tim. Probably something that could have been moved down sooner. Moderator team got a little bit of flack for that as well. So I had better see some people drafting Tim in D tier and building their team around him and winning games, uh, because that's why he's here. We've got Espeon, Brute Bonnet, Scovillain, you know, all of these just not doing a whole lot. We thought that Scovillain would be a threat with the option to have either Moody or Chlorophyll. We do allow Moody in this league. Um, we thought that Brute Bonnet would be a big threat with Spore. Placing it in the same tier as Breloom makes sense, but uh, just not getting not getting drafted too much. Espeon, Magic Bounce is a good ability, but just wasn't having a whole lot going for it. However, I do think it has a lot of potential with Terra Fairy or something like that. So now that it's in D tier, I think there's more incentive for people to try it out. And last on here is Mega Houndoom, a Pokemon that I've drafted before and personally really like. Uh, Megas obviously cannot Terra, and they also can't hold uh, an item besides their Mega Stone. And that on its own sort of makes them a little bit weaker than other Pokemon sometimes by default in Draft League. Obviously they have high stats. But not being able to have a flexible item is a, a pretty big disadvantage. So Megas tend to get moved down. In this case, that's what happened here. And I am curious to see if anybody can prove that Mega Houndoom was a little bit too good for D tier. Like I said, there's a lot to talk about. Uh, Robat's one of those mons that has a great utility, great speed, um, and... Oh. Um, Mantine Tim, as we've said before, um, is a great special tank. Um, good ability to water absorb. Uh, other mons, like we said, have not really met their potential, but I'm curious to see mostly because of these mons, I think they can do, they can do an interesting job. These other three mons can do interesting in uh, Sun. So we'll see how much teams change as a result of uh, having all these mons that could benefit from Sun. And uh, something that I think wasn't mentioned is that our league does not require Mega team. But we'll see if uh, more people just want to take Mega Houndoom just because. And that's a really good point that I didn't think about, but you know, this list has three things that obviously want to be on Sun teams. Personally, I think Espeon is, is a good option for Sun teams as well with Magic Bounce to prevent Stealth Rock. So uh, that's, that's a pretty good point. We could see some boost to not only Rain with these changes, but Sun too. Moved up from D to C, as, as a Storm said before, there's been several things that just not really moved up, more so moved down. Now, there's been a few changes um, from D to E. Uh, we have uh, Carbink, the, the uh, Rock Fairy. Then we have the Water Pulse uh, uh, Pokemon, or One Claw, sir. We have Cloth. We have Shenotic. And uh, all of these Pokemon, you know, do something, but apparently they don't do something that is very useful or they do not do it well. Uh, whatever the case is, they just weren't seeing a lot of use, and so they have gone to E tier. Um, Carbink can put up Stealth Rock. It can put up Light Screen and Reflect for your dual screens teams. All of these are really useful, but it just kind of doesn't do much else. It just kind of sits there after you put up your hazards and um, doesn't doesn't do a lot. It's also slow, which isn't ideal for a screen setter. Genotic gets Spore, which is obviously a great move. But aside from that, it's super slow and it, it just doesn't do a lot. Um, Cloth, I think, is a really cool Pokemon with a lot of potential with Anger Shell for boosting its stats. But being Mono Rock doesn't give you great coverage. Uh, probably needs... Terra in order to really thrive. So uh, generally you have a better option, like one of your C tiers for your Terra wild card, but maybe we'll see some people play with that. That would be cool. And Klotzer is a Pokemon I really like. I think it's hits really hard. I think it can pivot. It can be a good wall breaker, but it's slow and it doesn't uh, have much bulk. 
So we've seen that drop as well. TJ, is there anything here that you're thinking could be a good steal for a late round pick? I think of uh, of these ones, I think Clauser has the most potential. It, it is held back by its speed, but if you use it in situations where it just needs a, a strong special attacker, it can power through uh, several things. But otherwise, uh, I think none of the other Mons can really do a real sharp turnaround unless you're able to use, like you said, the anger point from Cloth really well. For sure, yeah. These things are all really um, niche. But uh, I think they can all do a job, and they can all be useful. They're all interesting in E-tier, for sure. Yeah, I think e even the carving's like a cheap fairy, but because of the prevalence of Iron Head as a move for a lot more months, I think it's, 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 a, it's definitely lost its luster in that regard. Yeah, that uh, four times steel weakness hurts. And fairies are pretty useful. I, I notice a lot of people trying to pick higher tier fairies, and I think that leaves... Carbink and Shinodic kind of in the dust. Especially with its rock type. Yeah. Now we have moving up, uh, we have Sween Killfish. Killfish from E to D. I think this one's funny because it's one of the only things that's actually moving up. And the votes were so in favor of it moving up more than anything else. More people thought that this thing needed to be D tier than people who wanted to ban Terrapagos, which um, says a lot about how useful this guy is. I mean, he gets Eviolite, he gets um, a lot of good moves for lead. I think it gets spikes and toxic spikes. It gets explosion, if I'm not mistaken, which is really fun. It gets a couple different options for abilities. You can use it on a rain team. You can use Intimidate. Uh, Poison Dark is, is a good typing. So this is just a really good utility Pokemon that was thriving in E tier. We saw it on a lot of good teams. Uh, I agree that it was time to move them up. Yeah, I agree that it's typing along with the ability to just hold an Eviolite just makes it a great mod to acquire. And along with the abilities, Intimidate, and the utility, even Priority Aqua Jet or Destiny Bond, it definitely has this use for, on any team, really. Now, uh, now we have several Mons that have been moving up from F to E. We have the Shell Smasher uh, Minior, then we have Angus Khan, we have Kamala, very bulky uh, lick tongue, lick licky, and then another regenerator mon uh, by name Audino. Yeah, Audino was one that uh, we also heard a lot of calls to to move it up from F to E. I agree, it was it was a strong F. I mean, you think about it, and you you might not think that it is that threatening, but it's it's hard to kill. It's hard to kill a mono normal type that has Regenerator and Wish, and that's bulky. And uh, you can also make it Terra Fairy, or I mean, Terra anything, I guess. But fairy is a good one, Ghost is a good one. It makes it really difficult to kill. You can say almost all the same things for Licky Licky. It doesn't have Regenerator, but uh, it does have some better offensive options. Um, Komala, Hangus Khan, powerful normal type attackers. I, I guess normal type is, is a theme here. Uh, a lot of normal types were in F tier, and uh, now there's less of them. And of course, Minior, um, powerful setup Pokemon. We've seen this thing sweep and take games before, really at every level of the league. So I, I think it's it's pretty fair to move it on up to E tier. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. Like there are mods that obviously have done stellar jobs over the past few seasons, and so it's time for a, a new set of F mods to really. Um, show their potential in game. And I guess that'll be the last one we have is some of those new F mons. So let's take a look at them. So here we see uh, Dub Wolf and Squawkabilly and the middle stage for, for Ninja, which is Frogadier. Yeah, and these were just not being touched. Um, I mean, I, I don't think any of them are bad but they they weren't really being touched in E-tier, so maybe we'll see a new F-tier king come from this list here. 
Um, I like Frogadier. Obviously, it's just a nerfed Greninja, but it's not bad. Double can do a lot. Walkability is a Pokemon that I have personally never used, but it gets a couple different abilities. It's pretty versatile. I think these are all good candidates for your F tier. Yeah, it's like it's like you it's like you said, like um there are mons that have potential to do something, but they haven't been really exploited. And the one I'm most curious is like what you said with squawkability and um it's different forms. Like I think that's something that some people might try to use as part of a theme, but it could just be something that could just be all need to be enough here for them to really make it work. Yeah, and uh I think those are all our changes. So um, again, these were voted on. I don't agree with every change. No single person agrees with every change, and that's okay. Uh, but I think it's going to be um, fun. I think we're going to have a lot of good changes here that'll help shake up the league. And uh, you know, let us know what you think. Leave a comment. Let us know what you think about these changes. Do you think that Mars Shadow is going to break the league? Are you happy that you can now terrestrialize your Togekiss? Uh, let us know. Uh, TJ, do you have any any other thoughts or any other closing words? No, I just I just uh, look forward to seeing what type of teams people come bring forward. Obviously, every season gives us a chance to see what type of mons can shine and what what changes need to be made to make our league more fun for everyone. So we hope that, regardless of the changes, everyone can have a little bit of fun in Season 6. And please do comment whatever you, f you feel would, would like to see or going forward. Yeah, for sure. All right. Thank you, everyone. And I hope to see you all in season six. Season six. Hey, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, do make sure to like and subscribe and come hang out with us in Discord.